Well, good afternoon. Welcome to uh, Eureka Springs CAPC workshop, and um, we're going to have agency presentations today. It's October 25th, 2023, 1 p.m., and our first agency on the stage is Paradise, and I'll let them introduce themselves. Thank you, gentlemen. Test, uh, thank you so much. We uh, appreciate you having us today. Um, I think this is my fourth or fifth opportunity to be on stage here at the Odds, so I'm kind of getting used to it um, and love this uh, beautiful venue for sure. So just really quickly, some introductions of who's here with you today. Uh, my name is Rudy Webb. I'm the president of Paradise Advertising. I've been with the agency now going on 16 years and really started in destination marketing. Um, my first job out of school, actually 25 years ago, was in destination marketing. So my entire advertising and marketing career has been dedicated to destinations just like Eureka Springs. My role at the agency has evolved over time, as you could imagine, um, starting with account management, handling an account much like yours, uh, and then growing to oversee our media and, and creative team, um, along with our PR and social. So really my role now is to make sure our team has everything that they need in order to uh, service accounts like yours. So. I'm not the only one here today. Let me intru uh, introduce uh, Tom Merrick, our Chief Creative Officer. Thank you, Rudy. Whoa, it does work, great. Um, I'm Tom Merrick, I'm Chief Creative Officer. I have been with Paradise Advertising for about nine years now. Um, I came to this agency um, to escape the cold, harsh winters of Syracuse, New York. Uh, one reason, the other reason was, uh, after a long career of doing consumer uh, packaged goods, B2B, healthcare advertising, which is to scotch of travel and tourism advertising. I really wanted to get focused on travel and tourism advertising. Um, I like the idea that instead of selling ceiling tiles to a, to a purchasing agent, uh, I am selling dreams to people who want to find a place to you know, spend their vacation dollars, escape with their families and make memories. I find this kind of a noble pursuit in the world of advertising, if there is such a thing. But anyway, I lead a team of uh, very talented, creative people. Um, I'm privileged to be working with them and I'm privileged to be working with people like Rudy here and Michael, who so I'll turn it over to. Hi, Michael, this is on. Yeah. Uh, Michael Coswitz, Group Director at Paradise. I've been with Paradise for one year, but prior to that I did work in travel and tourism. Um, it's a little surreal being on the stage because using my head's up there as I present at the CAPC meeting, so this is very fun. Um, but I lead everything uh, from the day-to-day -to, -day to making sure the strategic planning is done. I work with the media teams, our influencer teams, um, social media teams, uh, to make sure that everything is done on time um, and uh, to your guys' satisfaction. I have the pleasure of working with Danielle and Caitlin, and I get to work with Chris some, um, and Scott, of course, too. And it's just been a wonderful partnership that I think we've really got into a groove lately. I think we really have figured out a way to, to get the work done and to uh, come up with some really great ideas for the year. Great, thanks, Michael. And Michael's, you know, the, the lead point of contact for, for your account, and, um, he makes sure the wheels go round and round, right? So he's the, the hub, I guess, of the wheel to make sure that you know the entire team has everything that they need in order to provide the services to your account. And you can see behind me, it's not just us three that work on your account. We probably got 25 individuals that touch your uh, account in some sort of way. So we, we stand here on the shoulders of the giants of our team <laughs> that really bring everything to life on your behalf. And just a little bit background of, of background on Paradise, because we may be new to some of you. We've got some new people uh, on the commission now, and we haven't had an opportunity to kind of give you our story. So just really quickly who we are. We were started uh, 21, almost 22 years ago, and really specialize in travel and tourism. That is our 100% sole focus. And what that allows us to do is identify talented professionals that are dedicated to destination marketing that we can bring into our staff. So we have uh, about 45 staff members right now. Um, 20, 25 of them or so are in Florida. 
the other 20 are scattered throughout the U.S. And, and over the last couple of years, we've really been able to beef up uh, the, the type of talent that we have that is dedicated to your account. Um, one thing that I'm especially proud of on this, this chart here is the six plus year relationship that we have on average with our clients many of which have to go through the formal RFP process like we're going through now uh, with you. And we, I think it's been four years since we had to do this last time. So we're really committed to the relationships that we have, the type of service that we provide, but most importantly, it's the results that we're bringing to the destinations we serve. Because we can be super nice people and have a great relationship, do some really creative stuff, but if it doesn't move the bottom line, you all aren't gonna keep us around. So we're really proud of the relationships that we have and that tenure we have with our clients. And you can see we handle clients from uh, Florida all the way to Northwest uh, US up into the Northeast and into the Southwest. So we really cover the, cover the area. And we have three here in Arkansas. So we're dedicated to the state to make sure that we're driving impact to the tourism economy. Um, so what you asked us to do today, kind of what we'll cover, is to go through a case study, and we've actually decided to do two case studies, uh, just to give you some perspective on the agency. And what we'll do is we'll identify the strategies and tactics that we use, but most importantly, how that impacts the results that we're providing to our clients and the connectivity between the two. So we've got a lot to cover. We're gonna get through it in the next 45 minutes or so, and then we'll open it up to questions and answers. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Michael. Excellent. All right, so for the first case study we're proud to present is uh, Hendersonville, North Carolina. Um, we want to start first with talking about the goals and the strategies and the tactics we use for Hendersonville. So our goals were to differentiate Henderson uh, County as a destination worthy of travel, uh, to drive that overall in-market spend and economic impact with an emphasis on the lodging tax, wanted to increase visit overnight visits over to 21-22, uh, drive those midweek extended stays on the uh, Monday through Thursdays, and then also try to adjust the December through February marketplace. Uh, for strategies, develop a compelling brand um, and narrative that tells the story of the destination. Uh, create targeted marketing campaigns that showcase everything that's unique about Hendersonville. They have just so many wonderful offerings, but that information wasn't getting out, and so we found ways to do that. Implement a targeted multi-channel paid media strategy, looking to amplify the brand, looking to make sure that we're reaching all the touch points in the kind of the uh, decision funnel for a visitor. Um, and emphasize the distinct tra uh, attractions and experiences. One of the things we helped with them is kind of them to think about themselves as a whole. There was a lot of individual things going on. We were able to show them the power of coming together for marketing the destination. So for tactics, uh, develop, develop, develop advertising that emphasizes those unique attractions, ensure that there's a consistent brand message across everything we're doing, um, reimagine their website. We worked with them on their website to really bring to life all the experiences that Hendersonville has to offer, making sure that when a visitor goes there, they can find themselves there. Here's an itinerary that I could participate in. It helps them, it helps the visitor make those decisions. Um, and then execute an integrated advertising campaign and overall boost awareness uh, with aggressive retargeting. Once we get somebody on the hook, we would find ways to continue to retarget the audience and get them into that decision funnel. Okay, so the strategies and tactics and the goals, all that is very important. Um, but beyond just um, keeping all that in mind, um, me and my team is responsible for telling a story about a destination that, that gets people here in the heart because they want to know where to spend their vacation dollars. It's, you know, there are plenty of places that people can go. We wanna make sure we tell a story that makes people think, man, I, I really gotta check that place out. And the way that we do that um, is basically uh, surrounding um, the destination with everything it takes to um, communicate that destination's soul, its essence, uh, at every touch point, right? So on the website, uh, partner programs, working with tourism partners, obviously blog content, social media influencers, things that happen in the visitor center. We work a lot with our clients to make sure that we bring a campaign or some of the messaging to life within a, a visitor center. Obviously public relations, you'll see a lot of that today. Marketing and advertising, which I will walk you through some of that today. So we wanna make sure it's a consistent brand, one that resonates uh, with the audiences, like I said, and we do that by creating, by determining what I call the soul. And we get to the soul of a brand by um, spending some time there in a destination ourselves, 
uh, as if we were visitors. So we'll go up there and we'll eat in the restaurants, we'll check out the attractions, we'll meet the people, we'll obviously spend some time talking to partners and other key stakeholders. But through all that, we are able to determine what that brand feels like, what it's all about, right? And for Hendersonville, um, what we determined was that this sense of uh, peace and, and gratitude that you find when you're there in the mountains, uh, looking at all these amazing vistas, causes what we call mountain moments. And I usually like to write a kind of a brand manifesto, I call it, that describes what we're talking about. The new brand positioned Hendersonville as a destination where visitors can go to not only escape the day-to-day -day grind, but to find simple moments of joy that they cannot be found anywhere else. So moments like the quiet pleasure of enjoying a glass of wine made from the very vines that surround you, the overwhelming sense of peace that comes with getting to the top of a mountain and seeing the indescribable beauty of the Blue Ridge Mountains laid out before you, all of these and more um, are unforgettable mountain moments. And we wanted to bring that to life through every, through every um, touch point we can. So I want to show you some print ads that we did here first. Here we see some children just sort of enjoying the day with the beautiful Blue Ridge Vista in the background. From here, everything seems so far away, especially worries. Hendersonville, North Carolina, find your mountain moments. I love this one over here with a couple enjoying wine. Uh, Agritourism is a big, ish, a big um, uh, attractor in the Hendersonville area. Apples, a lot of vineyards. The perfect place for a hike tomorrow. Find your mountain moments. The beautiful region of the Blue Ridge here. Mother Nature does some of her best gardening here. This was actually in a targeted gardening publication within uh, North Carolina. For outdoor adventure, the riding here is great, but the stopping's even better. Hendersonville, find your mountain moments. Again, we could show you know, a lot of radical you know, dropping into uh, bike trails, but here it's beyond that. It's these moments you have between the rides. We're bringing that to life. Um, that all came to life also throughout the uh, visitor guide, which we help create the brand and its tone, uh, it reaches people at every touch point. Uh, very targeted digital ads here. Mountain moments are only a short drive away. This is geofenced around a certain area, that, so people who were um, becoming near the uh, within a driving distance would see this banner and lead them to the story about their mountain moment awaits in North Carolina. Here we are in the visitor guide again, but we, in addition to just listings. Again, it's about more than just the attractions and the hotels and the restaurants. It's about the, the moments you have, the feelings you can have there. So we actually interviewed um, some of the key uh, tourism partners and put them as kind of editorial content within the visitor guide. So it's not just a, a listing guide. It is a experience the destination within this booklet here as we talked to Mountain Moments with Kim Brown. Obviously, we brought it to life in all the... Um, the collateral materials they need. The visitor center is very popular in Hendersonville. They get a lot of people stopping in um, to pick up brochures about all the things they can do. So we applied that brand look and feel and tone to everything that they were able to pick up there. But we also started, we're bringing in um, QR codes so people can get the story on their phone quickly uh, in a digital fashion. So making this, um, these, uh, uh, executions that touch people in the right way is important, uh, but it makes it they become even more important when you can get them in front of them at the right time. Yeah. So for paid media, um, a lot goes into our decision-making process. Um, we have to go you know, look at the research. We use platforms like Zartico to really track where people are going, where they're coming from, where they're spending that time and destination. That allows us to really understand the markets that we want to concentrate on to make sure we're maximizing our budget. That also goes for target segments. There's a lot of different target segments you can uh, target. We want to make sure we are targeting the ones that are going to be most profitable and most easily for us to reach. So for Hendersonville, vacation rentals were important as a sub-segment. Obviously, the hotel is an overall strategy that we're working towards, but vacation levels was important because there was a lot of bigger families that wanted to come. We wanted to make sure that they weren't not coming to Hendersonville because we didn't have the inventory to do that, or they didn't know that we had the inventory to do that. Pet friendly, Hendersonville has literally, you know, dog retreat parks and hotel and uh, motels and hotels where people can take their animal and go there. We wanted to make sure that everyone understood that if you're looking for that long getaway with your pet, Hendersonville is a place that you can do that. Wine enthusiasts, they continue to make inroads into what they can offer from a wine standpoint. So we wanted to make sure that we were promoting things like the Cheers Trail where they can go and visit all these great wineries. We wanted to make sure that people that love to travel for that kind of wine tourism destination 
put Hendersonville on the list. And quite frankly, it might not have been there right away. And over the, you know, over the last couple of years, we're getting better traction to that. We can see that because we can see how many people are going to like the landing pages. So we know that information's working. Um, and then holiday campaign, obviously it's a little bit more of a downtime for them, but they've got a unique shopping experience on their downtown. And we wanna find ways to encourage people to come. Very important that they extend their stay. We want them to stay in market more. The way you do that is by telling them all the things you have to offer. If they don't know, they'll just do the weekend trip. If, we can un if they can understand a three-day trip gets you way more, that's very helpful to them. So targeting for them, 25 to 54, uh, household income over 1,000. Our target markets for them were the Carolinas, and then outside the Carolinas was Atlanta, Tampa, St. Pete, Orlando, and Knoxville. And then we usually, as with most of our clients, we'll have an always-on campaign that's always pushing out messaging. We can change that messaging, but it's always pushing it out there. That helps with everything from search engine optimization to everything that we're doing online. Uh, and then we'll do specific campaigns for fall, specific campaigns for holiday, and then a winter-spring campaign as well. So. The results, after all this work, after all this thinking, after all this work with the client, the results were really what matter. So taking it from the top, the launch of the new website saw a 25% increase in website users, 52% website page views. And the reason why that is quite simply the content was there. If I go, before they would go to the website, they might understand and learn about Hendersonville, but they couldn't see themselves in Hendersonville. So websites allows them to do that. Ultimately, that gets them to book uh, 14, million, uh, 14 million in digital uh, advertising impressions. Here's where the numbers get really important. $905,000 campaign gross bookings on a 15, .1, uh, 15 to one ROAS. So that's basically for every dollar we were spending in advertising, we were getting that 15 dollar uh, return. Uh, so overall, if you take the SDR data and air DNA for them that they have, it's about $75 million in accommodation revenue. Uh, public relations earned public relations around 300,000. We did a, we, the public relations around Hendersonville is again making sure we have enough to talk about. Uh, and then vacation rental listings in the county were up 20% year over year, 17% for the booked listings. ADR up 8% from the 223 to 241 year over year, and revenue up 17% year over year to 46.5. So these are the numbers at the end of the day that we need to be judged on for everything we do. Um, we want to make sure that the messaging is working. We want to make sure that the, the partners in the community can see the impact. We know that a lot of the stuff we do, the community doesn't see because it's the idea is to get people to come out uh, from out of market in there. But when you see results like this, you can understand that that dollar spent can get you a real return on your investment. And it only grows over time because the more people that learn about you, the more people that come back, the more people that talk about it, the more revenue will end up having. So our next um, case study is on Eureka Springs. And this is kind of the relations on it's a specific time period. It's kind of like 2022 to where we are now because we just have a lot to talk about. We've done everything from new, you know, new branding to uh, working our way through different marketing plans. So we wanted to give you a nice snapshot of kind of where we are and what we've done for you and how we approach that. So from a goals standpoint, um, establish and enhance Eureka Springs as a recognizable brand and a desired destination. We all know in this area it is, but as we talk about people from outside Dallas, places like that, we want to make sure we're getting the word of what makes you special, what is that? So it's an important goal we have. Increase awareness and the positive perception of the destination. Some people might have been here a long, long time ago and have different perception about Eureka Springs. We always, we're always dealing with that with destinations in a whole, so we want to make sure that we're able to do that. Promote Eureka as a top of mind choice for travelers seeking unique experiences. That's actually becoming harder and harder these days. Uh, ever since COVID, people want real, true, unique experiences when they travel. It's not enough just to go to a nice place. They want to be able to come back with a story as well as their Instagram photos. So there's a lot more choices out there and a lot more destinations marketing that. So we have to fight really hard for that attention. Um, extend the lengths of the visitor's stays uh, to stimulate their spending within the destination. That is just key. I mean, the longer we can keep you in market, the more money they're going to spend, the more results you'll see over time. Uh, foster economic growth by increasing the visitor activity and expenditure. So for strategies, strengthen the brand strategy. Use digital marketing tools and social media to really target smartly uh, at different time periods, at different, you know, different target segments. Um, create encouraging campaigns tailored to new and established target traveler segments. One of the things we'll show you in the creative is that over the last two years, we've really, I think we've worked great with the CPAC, CPC, CPAC to identify what we can do as far as different target market groups. So it could be bikers, it could be um, you know, religious tourism. It, we really find, found ways to um, 
explore those and see what we could get out of them. Um, create eng engaging campaigns tailored to new and established target travelers I talked about. Highlight those unique attractions and continually analyze that visitor behavior and optimize strategies. And from tactics, it all really starts in a lot of ways with the redesign of the website we did. It started that in 2022. We launched that in 2023. That goes back to what I was saying about Hendersonville. Now, visitors that go to the website can see themselves. They can understand how they can participate in Eureka Springs. They understand what they, you know, what they could do and why they should extend their stay there. Uh, launch those comprehensive paid media campaigns. Utilize those influencer partnerships that we'll show you a little bit later in the presentations. Promote the signature events you have. The odd is an amazing location for the events we have. It can be used more as a hub to bring people in, capture their information with geotargeting, and then retarget them after, as, after they leave to try to have them come back. Um, and then use that data-driven insights to adapt uh, marketing strategies and tactics. For budgeting, uh, one of the things we just wanted to talk about is that the way we approach budgeting with all of our clients is that once we develop that year-round, that year-long plan, we have to take a look at it and say, okay, so how much is this going to cost to produce? How much is this going to cost in labor costs? What are the hard costs associated with that? So we'll take the media plan, we'll look at an always-on campaign, and then we'll look at the seasonal campaigns. We'll look at the paid, mo the paid social media initiatives we have, digital initiative, influencer programs, whatever they will be. We will literally sit down in the agency and say, okay, for the budget for this year to do the you know, the, the, the always on campaign, a fall campaign, a spring summer campaign, whatever it is, we'll map out each one of the deliverables as that happen, put a price to it so that we can then present back to you to un understand kind of how that budget is formulated. Um, the way the process works is we review that media plan, get the cost, make the individual budgets for production, social media, public relations, whatever it is, estimate what those creative needs are internally, categorize those costs down so you understand what's labor and what's hard cost, uh, allocate for revisions. I mean, that's one of the things that's important, that as the creative comes into the shop and we're working on it, we need to make sure that the messaging is staying consistent, making sure that it's working with the technology platforms that we're gonna be using from media buy standpoint, um, and then monitor and adjust that budget to say, okay, mid-year, we haven't spent quite as much as we thought we were worth, which is good. What are some new opportunities we can do along the way? So the, at the end of the day, it's that creative estimate process, production phase, we invoice you, and then we submit for payment. So for strategic approach, uh, the goals is really awareness, visitation, and spend. It's drive awareness and affinity, brand top of mind for our target visitor groups, maximize the visitor economy, so which has an increasing in-market spend and economic impact, tourism amenities that support the community, and increase lodging and restaurant tax collections. So the way we look at the, you know, just like I said with the media plan, we look at all the available information from a research standpoint that's out there. We really try to find out what we want to target on for the year. So for overnight trips by visitors for non-residents, uh, Springfield, Fort Smith, Little Rock, Tulsa, we look at all these 10 and we decide, okay, what kind of weight are we going to be put towards them? Just because somebody's up the top for one reason doesn't mean you wouldn't look at them differently. Their, their, their daily spend could be higher, so we may want to target them in different ways. So top spending markets, Little Rock, Oklahoma City, Kansas City. Top markets for overnight visitation, Little Rock, Tulsa, Kansas City, Fort Smith. And then Dallas was something that we identified early in 2022 as a place that it seemed like it had some unexpected growth. We've continued to target Dallas, and they're coming in um, as 77% uh, uh, of the spending came from those higher household income parties uh, coming from Dallas. So we continue to see that as an opportunity. And that's just an example. Every year that's, that could change. We could find something new that we want to focus on and we'll do our best to figure out a plan that's going to be able to maximize the budget and give us the results we need. So for media planning, the primary audience is those adults 25 to 54 with that household income of 75,000. Couples and families, now that shifts during the year. There's some times of the year where couples is gonna be more of a focus. There's some times of the year where the families are gonna come into that. We are always adjusting for that in both the media buying and the creative messaging. And then secondary is those active baby, bo uh, baby boomers, 55 plus. Now, going back to what I said earlier, the target audience, um, the audience targeting, there's so many great things that we can focus on with Eureka Springs, and we've tried a lot of things over the last two years, and part of why we're doing that is because we're trying to get the learnings and understand what we can do going forward and where we should put those allocated funds. So everything from shopping, the families, 
kind of that couples retreat, the outdoor and nature ecotourism you have, attending events, the music concert series, you'll see some ads that are really focused on just about the concert series. Um, motorcycle, obviously with the bike blues and barbecue this year, we did some targeting around that to really see what we could do to drive people into Eureka Springs when they're coming for that event. Religious tourism, we know bus tours are coming, we want more of them to come you know, in a, in, a, in a positive way to be able to explore all the great religious tourism opportunities we have. The holidays in Eureka Springs, how can we promote that more? We've got a campaign launching this year that's specifically about that. Uh, LGBTQ 2022, we had uh, some focus on that where we are taking those learnings and we'll decide what we're gonna do going forward with that, um, you know, where it fits in the plan. Uh, arts, culture, history, culinary, dining out, craft beers, pet friendly, vacation rental travelers, and road trippers. I mean, I think the highlight here is that you really do offer something for such a wide segment of the audience. The challenge is, is how do we maximize the budget when we do that? So we're always gonna be looking at the different mixes to see what's performing and what's offering the greatest results. So I'll just quickly go through some media types we have. Obviously, there's targeted online banners. There's video and streaming that allows you to can really get a feel for the destination. Digital audio, podcasts, Spotify, those are becoming more and more listened to. It's a great opportunity to add some context to the messaging you're having. Uh, you'll see some two of the Choose Your Own Adventure um, uh, digital platforms that we did this year. This was great. I could go in, I could click on different things that I like. It would help kind of create that itinerary for me. Again, get you closer to booking the more you can see yourself in the market. Email marketing, buying list, find, find ways that we can reach new people that we never thought of, get them to interact, and then we can retarget them. Geofencing events like I mentioned, like blues and barbecue, odd events, festivals. Every time we can geofence, we can capture them, we can retarget to them, we can get them to come back again or come back for longer as they go, and then retarget with mobile ads after they leave the event. So with that, I'll hand it over to Tom that will take us through kind of the creative messaging that we've been working with over the last year and, year and a half, um, and go from there. Yep. Thank you, Michael. Sure. Sorry, I meant to go back. No. I'll go forward. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, as I said, uh, one of the things we do when we start with any client is immerse ourselves in the destination, get a feeling for what it's about. And when we started working with um, uh, Eureka Springs, our team came here and experienced the destination, like I said, like a, des like a visitor would. And what we felt was just the complete uniqueness of this destination. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like anything else we've ever been to. It doesn't feel like anything else. It is truly special um, and, and something that we want to share with people. So we put together this uh, brand manifesto at point. People say the most curious things when they visit us here in Eureka Springs, and we can't blame them. This is a place where a 67-foot-tall Jesus stands watch over the entire area, where the natural surroundings possess an almost magical beauty, and where a simple stroll around town can result in an entire year's worth of Instagram content. Fact is, the more you see, taste, do, and experience, the more you realize that this wonderfully unique se section of Arkansas can inspire reactions that are as perplexing as they are pleasing. But that's what makes us great. After all, this is Eureka Springs, and this is a place that is curious indeed. Now, this is the, the, the tagline that we started off with to portray that uniqueness. Um, I would like to say that as brands evolve, taglines can also evolve, and this is something that we are going to talk to you guys uh, as we continue forward, um, hopefully. But um, what is not changing is the uniqueness of the destination, right? The, the fact that you're both cool and quirky, that you're artsy yet approachable, hip and historic. Um, most importantly, we want to tell everyone that we are a warm, welcoming, inclusive a destination that is open to anyone and everyone um, that wants to visit a place unlike anywhere else in Arkansas. So in short, even if we change the tagline, we want to make sure that our brand looks, feels, and sounds curious, cool, quirky, artsy, approachable. This is what you are about. This is your soul, and we want to make sure that we continue to tell that story. So I want to show you just some of the uh, uh, example of all the different things we've done. So online banner ads, big part of our media spend. Here we are, the banner here says, one place, many ways to take the plunge. And the call to action here is curious, and it drives you to the website about uh, our outdoor activities. I also want to say, I mentioned the creative team that we work with, that I'm proud to work with. This is a photograph shot by my creative partner, Glenn Bowman, who came up here with some members of our team and shot some photographs here. Uh, loved the, the content that he got. Uh, here we are for families and outdoors. The Ozarks called. They want you to come out and play. Curious? 
Eureka Springs. Love that headline. The timeless elegance of the 1800s, now with Wi-Fi. Curious, again, you had this entire historic, cool, quirky downtown, but you know, you have all the modern amenities, you have everything that people want to explore and see. Even our downtown is a work of art. Curious, I love this one because we know how much, how many uh, galleries and, and artists there are in this community. I think this goes a long way towards telling our story, but at the same time, showing the artistic beauty of the downtown itself. Choose adventure in a real life painting. Curious, so this is, you know, brand positioning, awareness of all the adventures you can have. Value messaging has been an important part of what we've done over the past couple years. Mm -hmm. um, so we wanted to say that when you come here, your money goes farther, your vacation dollars go farther. So the headline here says, stay longer, play longer. Explore spring values. So even the deals have come out of hibernation. So that's in the spring. It's a fun way to say that. Unforgettable getaways, unbeatable values. So these are all the value messaging that we put out in a seasonal way on the shoulder seasons that will bring people out uh, to stay in the destination. Um, this is the choose your own adventure kind of uh, thing that Michael was talking mm -hmm. about. This was great because on a phone, people were able to sort of talk about what they want to do. Good times away, choose your adventure. Am I a foodie? Am I interested in outdoor adventures or arts and culture? So I'm interested in arts, let me go to that one. Oh, I can see some partners there, the Curated Gallery and Gifts, or Fire on Earth Retreat Center, or uh, J.A. Nelson Gallery. So I can see which one I want and almost plan my whole itinerary before I get to the destination. Here's one for foodies. I'm interested in foodie stuff, plan your foodie adventure, go to Bubba's Barbecue, Mud Street Annex, or Live Greens. So many options and just gives people a way to experience and feel and connect with the destination before they're here. That's what we want to do. So online banner ads, also we talked about targeting uh, our LGBTQ audiences. So here we say pride's a permanent fixture in our town. Uh, just one of the messages we sent to them. Again, important because we know that this is um, uh, an important visitor group. They have higher disposable incomes. They tend to spend more. We're seeing this with all of our, our clients. Pet friendly, people want to travel with pets. It's a huge trend, continues to grow. You have a great story to tell. Unleash your sense of adventure. Dog friendly getaways. I can't read that little call to action there on your thing. <laughs> um, but uh, we can really start to say how people can come plan a visit with your best friend and they'll find out more about dog friendly getaways here. Events and concerts um, are a focus of what we want to talk about. You have so many things to offer here at the Odd and beyond. Um, so it's not a party until you arrive. This takes them to the events page where they can see an updated list of what's going on in the town um, so they can plan their visit. We want to talk about specific events like um, bikes, brews, and barbecue. Um, so throttle down in Eureka Springs so we can come stay here. Biker events. Um, I love this one too. Loud rides, quiet riot. Eureka <laughs> Springs has it all. Throttle down in Eureka Springs. Native storytelling is an important part of what we do. As you flip it through your phone or on your, on your tablet um, about things that interest you, we can place ads in there that look like content that really sort of target you and say, you know, hey, we've got something. If you're, inter if you're interested, it's quirky, sorry. If you're interested in motorcycles, we have events here that are happening for you. So you can see a couple of native ads that we created for them. We've even done that for the value messaging, as you can see here. Once they um, are looking for places to go, they see a headline that says, Curious, curiously good value. Visit a place where affordable hotels and properties mean you can stay and play longer. That's an attractive proposition to somebody who wants to um, make their money go farther. I can stay longer, I can get another night, that's great. Um, some print ads targeting specific things, Arkansas Travel Guide, part quirky, part elegant, all unforgettable. Again, that's one of the photographs done by, by Glenn. Uh, for the motorcycle guide, even the trip here is the worth the trip here. I love that, that headline, it sort of says, you know, just trying, just getting here is part of the journey. The journey is the reward. Uh, for for uh, cyclists, bicyclists, Eureka Springs needs to be on everyone's list. The trails are super fun and the town provides all type of food, fun, and entertainment. Trust the professionals. That's a quote from some um, well-known bikers, mountain bikers, so we wanted to make sure we highlighted that. Outdoor adventure, one place, many ways to take the plunge, beautiful scenery there. Um, email marketing is a continuing um, uh, uh, touch point that we do. 
to stay on our customers' radar, to tell them what they had to, um, to see and do, what might be new, what events might be coming up. So you see an example here. Plan your getaway to the heart of the Ozarks. Keep up with what's going on in Eureka Springs. Events and concerts, like I said, an entertainment hub in Eureka Springs, the odd. We tell them about the uh, events that are going on here and what might be coming up elsewhere within the community, always asking them to sign up uh, to stay up in touch with us. Streaming video, huge part of what we did. We didn't put it in here to, uh, to run for you today, but it talks about all the different things people can experience here. Streaming audio, Michael mentioned podcasts. That is a big deal. We all listen to podcasts now, usually on our phone. Mm -hmm. um, so when you, you know, you're listening to Spotify, you will see this banner show up on your screen as you hear this ad. Um, the banner says, let us welcome you with open arms. I just love that banner. Uh, and, the, and the voiceover says, this summer, enjoy a getaway like no other in the heart of Eureka Springs. Our destination is blessed with incredible attractions for the whole family, like the stunning Thorn Crown Chapel in the woods, the Sacred Art Center, and of course, the great Passion Play, the world famous outdoor production of the greatest story ever told, all overseen by the 67 foot tall Christ of the Ozarks. Click this banner and plan your retreat to Eureka Springs today. Again, telling a story that resonates with them, um, with the right audience at the right time. Value messaging, same time. This is the banner that they can click on and go right to the site. Like you, we value a good time. But the voiceover says, these days, the costs of getting away are getting out of hand. Not so much in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. Our affordable hotels and properties let you stay and play longer, whether you're hiking, biking, paddling, fishing, or just exploring our downtown. For a value-packed getaway that's curious indeed, click this banner and plan your visit to Eureka Springs today. A curiously good time awaits. So part of all that, in conjunction with all that, is a, is a, a myriad of social media solutions that Michael will talk to you about. Yep. So for social media, um, you know, the way we look at that is to broaden a collection of social, friendly, shareable, engaging content. We want to be able to showcase as much as we can that's going around with Eureka Springs, showcase diverse travel experiences from real-time visitors, highlight the business partners of Eureka Springs. I mean, that's really a lot of ways what makes you guys so special is the business partners. We want to make sure they're getting attention so people can understand one of the unique things about coming here. Um, and then partner with niche uh, target influencers and content creators to create content around a myriad of things. It could be outdoor travel, event promotions, foodie. Um, you know, we, there's an there's a influencer for anything these days. We can always find ways to bring them into the mix. So we're not going to go through a, um, you know, a, a, a long list of uh, posts, but we've had just great success by focusing on the, with the paid media we're working on uh, to get the information out there, get people to interact, get them to engage. Uh, and then also it's complementing the uh, organic social that you guys are doing internally. Uh, for influencers, we've had uh, influencers come to market last year and for this year. Last year we had RQ Travels, we had Jess Ross. Uh, this year we had Brittany Rose came into market just uh, like last weekend, I think. And then we have uh, Dallas Party of Two that came over Labor Day. So these have been very powerful. Um, you know, we can track kind of the engagement. Um, you know, we're you know, you look at like 89,000 followers, it's, it's a really great deal. We can, they can put up a lot of posts up there, get interaction, and people that follow her from Dallas, and we know Dallas is a target audience that we're seeing a lot of people come from, so this is a worthwhile investment with an influencer because we know there's more people out there that can come visit uh, Eureka Springs from that market. Yeah, and from a public relations standpoint, what we try to do is utilize our PR team who has, has been in your seats, actually. They've worked at, a, at destinations, and they understand of the power of storytelling and ways to get sort of the unique um, attributes of a destination into travel writers' hands, right? So we can help tell that story in places we may not be able to afford, for example, right, like CNN or Condé Nast Traveler. Uh, it would take hundreds of thousands of dollars to place an ad in those publications, but we can use PR to help tell that story in order to expand the reach of all of our efforts. So we can be in markets that we may not be able to with public relations efforts. For example, we can't spend media dollars there, but we can, we can reach a national audience by being in those publications. And then we can get very specific in who we're targeting. For example, foodies with like um, Food and Wine magazine or architecture Architectural Digest, right, about some of the great art and architecture here in Eureka Springs. So we use PR to help expand our reach and efforts in order to promote awareness overall. Again, most importantly, um, for a national effort. You can, uh, I don't have the thing next. Yep. Yeah, and just over the last couple of years, 
Um, honestly, Eureka Springs, we, at the agency, we've called it our media darling because it has really generated a significant amount of, of press um, just because, right, it's such a unique place and it's got a wonderful story to tell. So here are just some examples of where we've been able to place, right? Forbes Magazine, Southern Living, Cosmo, uh, Travel and Leisure, go to the next one, Thrillist, um, Yahoo, uh, Foders, right? Best Life. And again, we're placing these stories, we're writing them, we're helping the travel writer help tell that story of Eureka to a national audience. And actually, we just had two hits in the last week um, this, this month about um, you know most haunted uh, properties and hotels. So that's in um, Condé Nast Traveler and Thrillist. And again, these these publications reach millions and millions of viewers. So we're really excited about the success that we've had from a PR standpoint. And again, we, we consider Eureka a media darling here at the office. Um, and then website. You're very proud of the work uh, that we all work together on to get this website uh, launched. As I mentioned, it's just allows the visitor to see themselves there. We've made it so the list, updating the listings for our partners is much easier. It's very quick. They can get on there. They can put the, the events that they have coming up. The more easy it can be for people to post their events, the more likely we can get people outside the market to understand all the options that are available in the market. Um, and we obviously modified, made it sure that it worked wonderfully on a website and tablet, but also worked great on a phone because we know a lot of people are working, are uh, looking for information that way nowadays. Um, so the results. So if we look from January 2022 to September uh, 30th, 2023, website users is up 35%. Page, uh, website page views is up 20%. Uh, 30 mil uh, 32 million in digital advertising media impressions. Um, for the uh, travel uh, campaign gross bookings, that's 745,000. Um, the return on ad spend, I mentioned this with Hendersonville, this is always a really important thing to look at. For every dollar spent on the media advertising, you were getting $13 uh, back in your return, so that's a huge deal. Uh, public relations, obviously, is very powerful. Uh, if you look at you know, estimated impressions, you're into massive numbers, and the same thing with the estimated ad value at 138 million. Um, all this leads up to what we've been seeing since we started working with you. Since 2019, uh, without the exception of 2020, for obvious reasons, uh, from 2019 to 2023, restaurant tax collections are up 35% and lodgings up 39%. Uh, percent. Now, obviously, we're not quite done the year yet, but if, even if we stay flat for the rest of the year, we'll be, very, we'll be you know, at that two million plus number. Um, and we're just very proud that the, again, we don't, we're not taking credit for all of it, but we know we were an important partner and we're really proud to work with you guys to help get those, those numbers up there and to keep that trend going. Yeah, so looking ahead, right, that's where we're at now. We've taken, you know, up until present day, and what we would, you know, we feel like we're just getting started in our relationship with you all. Uh, so moving forward, right, we want to look at that positioning platform, the Curious Indeed, right? Is it time to evolve that? We've got some new individuals mm -hmm. that are guiding, help guide the strategic direction, so let's take a minute and, and reevaluate. Is that where we want to be, or do we need to evolve that? Look at all those target markets and target audiences. Is, right now that we have a couple of years worth of learning and again those th those couple of years were a bit tumultuous um, but I think we're getting back to a normalization of the travel pattern so how can we use the information we've learned over the last couple of years and apply that moving forward right leveraging our relationships within uh, the community and with our, our partners and with stakeholders really to support the staff right we know there's been some transition historically uh, maybe even moving forward let's use that use each other in order to, to move forward. Um, optimizing efforts, right? Take what we've learned in order to help continue to grow the local tourism economy here and make sure businesses are thriving. Looking at, right, extending the stay, uh, impacting midweek travel, um, 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 reevaluating how we approach seasonality, right? So restaurants are open year-round, uh, all, all in, 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 in all week, um, making sure that you know not just during high season, but shoulder season and low season, that we're injecting um, advertising in order to help move the needle. Then expand awareness, you know, in market share again um, amongst our target markets and audiences, and then really just help to promote the events that are happening within town because this is an event town for sure. We want to make sure that we help spread the word with that. So that's what we anticipate looking forward. So in closing, um, 
We covered a lot here, a lot of which you've already, you know, you've been a part of, you've been participating in. Um, some of you are relatively new to this, so we wanted to make sure we provided an overarching history of the relationship that we've had with you. But I think, you know, what you've learned about Paradise is that we are collaborators. We are here working alongside of you, working with you to help define the strategic direction. That will continue. Our, we're dedicated, right? Um, there has been transition here. Um, I think uh, every single CAPC member is different than when we first started. Um, <laughs> staff is different than we first started. There's been change. Uh, we have, I, I'd like to think that we have helped you know, secure things and stabilize things during that transition, and we would continue to do that. Um, we have wonderful momentum. You saw, right, the impact that we've had since 2019. Again, we're not taking all the credit for that, but we think we've had a part in that. We've got wonderful momentum, so let's continue to participate to, and work together to build on that. Um, we're transparent, right? I think if you ask us anything, we'll give you an honest and true answer. And if we don't have that answer, we'll go find it and we'll provide it to you. And we, that's how we operate with all of our clients. And we wanna make sure that you're comfortable with how we operate as an agency. Um, our strategic direction, right? We, we, it's important to understand the intelligence that helps drives our decisions and then helps us report back to the impact those decisions are having. And that's how we approach every single client, especially your all. And then forward thinking, right? We want to be innovative. We want to get Eureka Springs story told in as many uh, as places as possible so people, we can make that connection uh, with them so they come here, visit, spend their money, and come again. So with that, we'd like to thank you for this opportunity to present our story uh, and our relationship with you over the last four years. And at this time, we'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you so much. That was a great presentation. Um, I know I have some questions. You guys have some questions? Okay. You want to start or you want me to fire away? <laughs> Chris has a whole notepad full of questions. <laughs> Steve Holifield with uh, CAPC and City Council. I just have one question, the bottom line. You know your competitors. You know we're hearing from other people today. What makes you better than them in your, your agency? Yeah, I can answer that. Yep. And I think it's that last slide um, that I just went through. I think it's that last slide. I think, yes, there are um, other advertising agencies that do what we do. I think if you were to talk to our clients that have worked with us and other agencies, because that does happen sometimes, um, they would tell you that Paradise approaches the relationship very differently than other um, agencies. We dig in, we dig in, we um, go above and beyond. We want to make sure that we have a relationship with you because we're not gonna get it right every single time. We're human beings, right? We may, may make a mistake, but we're gonna make it right. And that's our, that's our pledge to all of our clients, including you all that uh, we're here, we're dedicated to this community because we've got some people here that you know th uh, uh, make their living, right? All of you make your living on this industry. Mm -hmm. And we understand the importance and the impact that we have on all of you. And that's what we're here for. That's, that's what drives us every single day. So I think our passionate approach to the relationships that we have um, separates us from every other agency. Uh, David Avanzino, CAPC and City Council. Um, one of the things that we hear <clears throat> a lot from our locals is what does a company in Florida know about Eureka Springs? Um, we hear it a lot. I'd like you to address it because uh, I know you do do your deep dives, your data point collections. Uh, but if you could answer that question for our general public and our residents, that would be great. Yeah, I can take yeah. that and, and Michael and, and Tom if you want to add on. It's an excellent question. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we are dedicated to this industry, right? So we understand what it takes in order to move the needle from a destination marketing um, uh, of opportunity or position. Um, Yes, we just happen to be our headquarters in Florida, but we have staff all over the country. Uh, we specialize in this, and I think some of the other agencies that you're talking to do, do as well. Um, we are not going to be the experts 
that you all have locally on your businesses, but it's our expertise that is to package that and tell it in a compelling way in order to drive visitation, right? In order to move that needle. So if you're able to find a local agency that has the buying power that we have in millions in media spending, um, PR uh, individuals that have relationships with national travel writers, social media experts, creative experts that develop wonderful um, creative executions, uh, I would say hire them, hire them, if you can find that here locally. But my guess is you probably can't, and that's where an agency like Paradise can come in. We specialize in this. It's our job to help tell your story. And if I can jump on top of that, I think um, being from a different place um, enables us to tell it from a fresh set of eyes, a new mm -hmm. perspective, right? We come in and we experience it, um, like I said, as a visitor would. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, our eyes open when we see the Flatiron Building. Our, mm -hmm. you know, um, it, it, we feel it exactly like, a, like an outsider would, like a visitor would. And I think that's what enables me and my team um, to put together creative executions that really resonate um, with potential visitors because we know what they're looking for and we're able to tell it in a way that is powerful. If you're close to it every day, I don't know as you can do that as well, my opinion. Um, so they stole my questions. But to expand on Steve's, I'll expand on both. So expand on Steve's, um, you know, like any other industry, there's industry awards out there. And I think you guys have won some. So, you know, if you look at the industry awards you win, how are you known or to specialize or what are you the leader in, in your industry? Yeah, I would say uh, we are a leader in that. Um, there's sort of uh, uh, one, we call it the Oscars of destination or travel marketing, and that's the HSMAI, Hospitality Sales Marketing Association International they hold um, a, an event every year, um, the, the Adrian Awards is what it's called, and it's basically the Oscars of, of destination marketing. And yes, we have won um, hundreds of, of Adrian Awards over the years. I think our total for the agency is somewhere near 500 um, awards overall uh, since the inception of the agency. And again, those are based not on just creative ideas, those are based on results. That's a huge portion of what they factor um, um, their awards on. So we're very proud of that. What, what um, would you say that is something that everyone goes, man, paradise, they kill it on this? So, yeah, and uh, I think um, I know this answer uh, definitively because it's what our competitors come up to us and say, honestly. It's our creative um, executions. Uh, we have one of the best, if not the best, creative teams in the industry, um, and I would, I would put our team up against uh, even the biggest agencies in the world. Um, I think our creative uh, outshines um, our, our competitors by far. So what that means to you is, is that when that is placed and when it's in the front of the right target, uh, it gets noticed, right? So that makes our media dollars go even further because the creative is executed so well. Oh, shucks, Rudy, thank you for that. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna piggyback David's question, but I'm gonna be a little harsher. So we've got people all over the country and last year we talked about boots on the ground here and so what happened to that? Yeah, excellent. Um, Chris, I'm just going to be honest. Uh, you and I talked about having people come in destination, and um, we were informed that it may not be a good idea to have people in destination. I don't understand that. Um, we want to be here. We want to have our, our team here. We want to have relationships with all of you. Uh, so that would be something we would be 100% for because that's exactly how we operate with our other clients. Specifically talking about like an, you know, a remote office yeah. type person. Yeah. Okay, there, we have a miscommunication then if that was your perception because we always asked for someone. Yeah, we would love to have an office here, right? We need to make sure that it makes sense from the agency's perspective in order to have an individual, an office space, all of that. And we would work 
through that with, with you all. Uh, we do that with other clients as well because we have right the need for an individual to be there and in the budget supports that. So we would absolutely be more than open to, to talking about that relationship for sure. Absolutely. I got more. <laughs> we're, we're ready. Um, we also, if, if there's written questions from the audience, uh, I didn't mention that earlier, but um, Danielle can collect them and, and bring them down if we don't cover them. So with PR, you, you've got some impressive uh, PR results and um, groups you're working with. What about regional type PR? How do, we, how do we strategize and drill down to hit PR in a more regional focus? Yeah, and I think you know our efforts honestly have been on, on a national approach, and you can see the results that it's had. I think we can we can either uh, broaden that to focus more regionally as well, or even narrow to fo focus more exclusively regionally. And and again, um, it's it's an easy shift in strategy. And, but I do I do think it's always important to remember that the national work feeds into the regional, right? Because you know, no matter what the publication is, if it's a national reach like a New York Times or someone like that. If the regions around us, around you, know, around you, see them writing about it, it will pique their interest to want to write about. It. So someone in Dallas might go, "Wow, I didn't know, I didn't realize that was going on in Eureka Springs. I just read about it in this publication that's national. I need a story next week. I'm going to go check that out and see if I can do that." So, yeah. um, another thing we're, we we've we really need to develop, and I haven't seen is um, more lead gen and capture and. Uh, yeah, it's um, an excellent question. I think on the newsletters uh, mm -hmm. that we, we um, shared with you, there is uh, email capture there uh, on the website as well. Uh, there are very specific media tactics that we can use in order to develop um, leads, mm -hmm. um, uh, emails, um, and, and first party data collection is gonna be extremely important in the next three to five years, I would say. It has been important. Uh, we can, there are specific, um, tactics that we can use in order to, anybody who goes to the website, we can collect information and then retarget. That's something that we could very easily turn on. And then what that allows us to do is understand the audience profile even better. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we're still building the foundation of some of the assets and, and products that we're using to, to market. Um, so that would be a next phase, absolutely. So you made a great point about you know some of the muscle uh, the size of your agency, mm -hmm. the, um, the leverage you have with media dollars. So how does that benefit us? I didn't really hear that piece, and I think yeah. for the public, that's mm -hmm. probably something that people need to understand better. How does that benefit us? Yeah. That's, or does it just benefit you, you know? So. No, it absolutely benefits you all because what we're able to do is lean on the partners within the industry. And there are, you know, there are uh, a series of media providers that we have relationships with that we spend you know, millions in media. So you don't have millions to spend in media, but we do as an agency. So we can leverage that buying power to get more beneficial rates for you all that, again, applies to all of our clients, but for you all specifically. And then what that also do, does is allow us to lean on them and say, okay, that's what you're, we're gonna pay you to do. Now we, what are you gonna give us an added value or bonus? And usually we get about a 20% mm -hmm. um, added value from all of our media buys. So if we're spending a half a million dollars with you all, 20% of that would be an additional $100,000 of just added value because of the relationships we have in the industry. I think that's probably like a really big point. Thank, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Based on your current portfolio and based on the customers who have achieved the highest ROI, what do they do that Eureka Springs does not? And a second question, is a visitor guide currently in place? Yeah, so first question, I'll take that, Michael, yep. maybe, maybe talk about the visitor guide. So the first question is, um, let me just make sure I understand it. So our clients that re, uh, achieve the highest return on ad spend, what do they do that's different than ours? So that's, that's a really tough question to ask because each destination that we represent is unique in its own way, and Eureka is just that for sure. So there are uh, one budget impacts, 
two, target audiences, three, geographic regions that they're trying to reach into, uh, and then overall product that they're able to um, provide, right? Whether that's hotel properties, some, some like flagged or, or privately owned, uh, and then vacation home rentals. And then the third part of that is, what reporting metrics do we have on the back end, right? So how are we able to capture what our impact has done? So we need to make strategic decisions on how to best utilize your budget, right? So we, there are some very robust reporting and insight analytical tools that we don't tap into on your behalf because we would rather use those dollars towards paid media to get the word out there. So once we start to, if the budget increases, and I'm not saying that advocating for that, I'm just saying if it were to, then we would look at some of those tools and platforms in order to help provide a more robust return on ad spend and return on investment because we're co collecting data that way. So it's, it's really hard to say on what that impact will be. I think, what where were we at, 15 to one mm -hmm. um, yeah. um, return on ad spend, that's a pretty significant number. Um, and again, each campaign is even a little different within yeah. that, but overall, 15 to one is very strong. Yeah. Well, the second question about the visitor guide again. Yeah, it said, um, you know, in that scenario, is a visitor guide currently in place? Yeah, currently not. But what we want to do is is get one. Actually, step back. One of the ones we one of the things we've realized with destinations is that once you can solve and optimize the website, the visitor guide that can come out of that is much more powerful. Once you can have a repository for people to put all the listings and all the events, that can make that visitor guide more powerful. So yes, we would love to plan out a visitor guide for next year. I think what they were saying is like the, comparing to another top ROI type. Cause no, I'm sorry. Huh? Is there? Yeah, no, no, not right now. Yeah, not right now. Yeah, yeah and, and as people uh, become more and more sophisticated, right, te technology-wise, the website should do the heavy lift on that. Yeah. Yes, people always love to have tactical, right, and we understand that. But again, we're making strategic decisions based on the budget that we have, and we're a budget where can it have the most impact, right? So when you think about a visitor guide, you gotta think about, right, the design and printing of that, and then the postage of that, right? So those some are some added costs that we can utilize in order to help tell the story, drive them to the website where they can get, really, more up-to-date information quicker. Yep. I think this will have to be our last question because I think we're out of time. Are there tools that can be added to the website to be to more effectively track conversions? How frequently are landing pages used to track campaigns? Yeah, there's always gonna to be tools to uh, better track conversion. Every year we always do an analysis of what's available out there, what kind of the price points are. Is, it, is, is the information we're gonna get actually worth the investment? So it's absolutely something we'll always be looking at and providing options for. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you very yeah, much thank again. You guys. We appreciate uh, the relationship and the opportunity that we've had over the last four years to work uh, with your wonderful destination. We would be honored to continue that relationship moving forward. Thank awesome. you. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Thank you.